Well, hi, everybody. John Wall is here, and welcome to theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. Glad to have you aboard here as we continue our coverage here of reInvent 22. We're out at the Venetian in Las Vegas. A lot of energy down on that uh, exhibit floor, I promise you. We're a little bit away from the maddening crowd, but we're here with the Executive Summit, sponsored by Accenture. I've got two guests I want to introduce you to. Jason Beyer, who's the Vice President of Data and Analytics at Bridgestone Americas. Jason, good to see you, sir. Hello, John. And Josh von Schomburg, who is the Managing Director and North America Lead for AWS Security at Accenture. Josh, good to see you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, first off, just a quick take on, on the show. I know you've only been here about a day or so, but just your thoughts about what you're seeing on the floor in terms of energy, enthusiasm, and, and I think turnout, right? I'm really impressed by it. We've got a lot of people down there. Yeah, I've, I've been certainly impressed, John, with the, the turnout, but just, as you say, the, the energy of the crowd, the excitement for the new things coming, uh, it seems like it's a really pivotal moment for many organizations, uh, including, including my own, and uh, really excited to see what's coming over the next so couple let's, days. Let's jump into Bridgestone, then. I, I, I kind of kidded you before we started the interview, saying, all right, tires and golf balls, that's what I relate <laughs> to. Uh, but you have a full array <laughs> of consumer products and solutions you're offering, and, and your responsibility is managing the data and the analytics and making sure those business lines are as efficient as possible. Absolutely, John, so in my role, I have the privilege of being in an enterprise position, so I get to see the vast array of Bridgestone, which it is a large, highly vertically integrated company, all the way from raw material sourcing uh, of natural rubber to you know, retail services in the automotive industry. We're at scale across those areas. The exciting thing about the company right now is we're going through this business transformation of becoming, you know, building on that heritage and that great legacy of having high quality, high performance, highly focused on, sustain, uh, on safety products to becoming a product and solutions company. Mm -hmm. In particular, a, a sustainable solutions company. So what that means is we're bringing uh, not only those great products to market, tires, golf balls, mm -hmm. you know, hoses, uh, all kinds of rubber, air springs, products to market, uh, but thinking about the how do we service those uh, after they're in the market, how do we bring solutions to help fleets, uh, vehicle owners, vehicle operators, uh, operate those in a sustainable way, in a cost-effective way. Yeah. So those solutions, of course, bring all new sets of data and analytics that come with it, and technology, and moving to the cloud to be cloud native. So this new phase for the organization that we refer to as Bridgestone 3.0, and that business strategy is driving our cloud strategy, our technology strategy, and our data strategy and AWS and Accenture are important partners in that. Yeah, so we hear a lot about that these days, about this transformation, this journey, right, that people are on now. And, and Josh, when Bridgestone or other uh, clients come to you and they talk about the, the kind of their migrations and what's their footprint going to look like yeah. and how do they get there? <coughs> uh, in the case of Bridgestone, when, when they came to you and said, all right, this is where we want to go with this, right? We're, we're, we're going to embark on a significant upgrade of our systems yeah. here. How do you lead them? Where, how do you get them there? Yeah, I mean, there, I think there are a couple key cloud transformation value drivers that we've emphasized and that I've seen at Bridgestone in my time there. Um, I mean, number one, just the rapid increase in the pace of innovation that we've seen over the last couple of years. And a lot of that is also led by the scalability of all of the cloud native AWS services that we're leveraging. And in particular with the CDP platform, um, it, it really started off as a single use case and, and really a single tenant data lake. And then through the, you know, the strategic vision of, of Jason and the leadership team, we've been able to expand that to, to 10 plus tenants and, and use cases. Mm -hmm. And a big, big reason behind that is, is the scalability of all these AWS services, right? So as we add more and more tenants, all the infrastructure just scales without any manual provisioning, any tuning that we need to do. And that allows us to go really from, you know, from idea to, to POC to production and really a matter of, of months when traditionally it might take years. So and if I can build upon that, please John, do, yeah. the, the CDP or central data platform is part of a broader reference architecture that reflects that business strategy. So we looked at it and said, we could have taken a couple of different pro approaches to, to, to recognize that the, the business challenges we're facing. We needed to modernize our core, our ERP, our manufacturing solutions, you know, move to smart factory and green factories, our PLM solutions, but at the same time, we're moving quickly. We have a startup mindset in our mobility solutions businesses, um, our, where we're going to market on our customer and commerce solutions, and we needed to move at a different pace, and so to decouple those, 
we, in partnership with Accenture and AWS, built out a reference architecture that had a decoupling layer that's built around a, a data fabric, a data connected layer, uh, integrated data services as well. The, uh, a key part of that uh, architecture is our central data platform built on AWS. This is a, a comprehensive data lake architecture using all the modern techniques within AWS to, to bring data together, to coalesce data, as well as recognize the multiple different modes of consumption, whether that's classic reporting, business intelligence, analytics, uh, machine learning, data science, as well as API consumption. Mm -hmm. And so we're building that out. It, you know, a year ago it was a concept on a PowerPoint mm -hmm. and you know, just show and, and kind of reflect the innovation and speed. As Josh mentioned, we're up to 10 tenants, we're growing exponentially, there's high demand from the organization to, to leverage data at scale mm -hmm. uh, because of the business transformation that I mentioned and that modernization of the core ecosystem. That's crazy fast, right? <laughs> All of a sudden, whoa! Faster almost, than I expected. Almost snap overnight. You know, and, and you raise an interesting point too, I think, when you talk about how there, there was a, a segment of your business that you wanted to get in the startup mode. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't think Bridgestone, I don't think about startup, right? I, I think, you know, in, in a, a much more, I wouldn't say traditional, but, but you've got big systems, right? I mean, and so, how did you kind of inject your teams with that kind of mindset, right? That, hey, um, you're going to have to hit the pedal here, right? Yeah. And I want you to experiment, I want you to innovate. And, and that might be a little bit against the grain for what they were used to. So, just over two years ago, we built and, and started uh, the organization that I have the privilege of leading, our data and analytics organization. And it's a, it's a COE, it's a center of expertise in the organization. We partner with specialized teams in product development, marketing, other places to enable data and analytics everywhere. We want it to be pervasive, it's a team sport. But we really embraced at that moment what we refer to as a dual speed mindset. Speed one, we've got to move at the speed of the business. And that's variable, uh, based on the different business units and, and, and lines, of, lines of business and functional areas. You know, the core modernization efforts, those are multi-year transformation programs. Uh, that have multiple phases to them, and we're embedded there building the, fu the fundamentals of data governance and data management and reporting operational things. Uh, but at the same time, we needed to you know, recognize that speed of those startup businesses where we're taking you know, solutions and service uh, offerings to market, doing quick you know, minimum viable product, put it in a market, try it, learn from it, adapt, sometimes you know, shut it down and, and, and take those learnings into the next uh, into the next area, as well as joint ventures. Uh, we've been much more aggressive in terms of the partnerships uh, in, in the marketplace, the joint ventures, the minority investments, et cetera, uh, really to give us that edge um, in, in how we corner the market on the, the fleet and mobility solutions of the future. So having that dual speed approach of operating at the speed of the business, we also needed to balance that with speed two, which is building those long-term capabilities and fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And that's where we've been building out those, those practical examples of having data governance and data management um, across these areas, building uh, robust you know, governance of how we're thinking about data science and the evolution of, of data science and that maturity towards machine learning. And so having that dual speed approach, it's a, different, it, it's a difficult balancing act, but it's served us well, um, you know, really partnering with our, our key business stakeholders of where we can engage, where what services they need, and where do we need to make smart choices between those two different speeds. Right, you just hit on something I want to ask Josh about, about how you said sometimes you have to shut things down, right? If, it, if, if it's one thing to, to embark on, um, you know, uh, I guess a new opportunity, or explore, right, mm. new avenues. And then that, to tell your client, well you might have to, might be some bumps along the way. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, people in, in <coughs> Jason's position don't want to hear that. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to hear about bumps. Yeah. You know, we want this to be, again, yeah. working with clients in that respect and understanding that there's going to be a learning curve and that some things might not function the way you want them to. We might have mm -hmm. to take a right instead of a left. Yeah, and I, I think you know, the value of AWS is you really can fail fast and, and try to innovate and uh, try different use cases out. You don't have any enormous upfront capital expenditure to start you know, building all these servers in your data center for all of your use cases. You can spin something up easily based an idea and then, and then fail fast and, and move on to the next idea. And, and I also wanted to emphasize, I think, how critical uh, top-down executive buy-in is for any cloud transformation. And I mean, you could hear it, the excitement in, in Jason's voice and you know, anytime we've seen a failed cloud transformation, 
the common theme is, is typically lack of executive buy-in and, and leadership and vision. And uh, I think from day one, I mean, Bridgestone has had that buy-in from Jason throughout the whole executive team. And uh, I think that's that's really evident in the success of the CDP platform. Absolutely. And what's been your experience in that regard then? Because I think that's a great point Josh raised that, that you might be really excited in your position, but you've got to convince the C-suite. Yeah. That, and, and, and there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of variables there that, that have to be considered that are kind of out of your sandbox, right? So up to, for somebody else to make decisions based on a holistic approach, right? So, I could tell you, John, talking talking with with peers of mine, um, I recognize that I've I probably had a little bit of privilege in that regard because the leadership at Bridgestone has recognized to move to this product and solutions organization and have sustainable solutions for the future we needed to move to the cloud. We needed to shift that technology forward. We needed to have a more data-driven approach mm -hmm. to things. And so the, the selling of, of, of that was, was not a huge uphill a battle, to be honest. It was almost more of a pull from the top, from, mm -hmm. our, uh, from our global group CEO, from our, you know, from our CEOs in our different regions, including in, in Bridgestone Americas. They've been, pushing the, they've been pushing that forward. They've been driving it. And as Josh mentioned, that's been a really huge key to our success, is that executive alignment um, to, to move at this, at this new pace, uh, at this new uh, frame of innovation, because that's what the market is demanding uh, in you know, the changing landscape of mobility and, and the movement of uh, vehicles and, and things on the road. So how do you two work together going forward, Ben? I mean, because you're in a great position now, you've had this tremendous acceleration in the past year, right? You're talking about this tenfold increase and in what the platform's enabled you to do. Um, but yeah. as you know, you can't stand still, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so much excitement, so many use cases in the backlog now, and it's, it's really been a, a snowball effect. I think, you know, one of the use cases I'm <coughs> most excited about is starting to uh, apply ML, you know, machine learning to the data sets, and uh, I think there's an amazing um, IoT predictive maintenance use case there for all of the, the sensor data collected across all of the tires that are sold. There's an immense amount of data, and you know, ultimately we can use that data to predict failures and, and make mm -hmm. our roads safer and, and help save lives. Right. It's, hard to, it's hard to not take a long time to, to explain all the things, because there is a lot ahead of us. The, the demand curve for capabilities and the enabling things that AWS is going to support is just tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, as Josh mentioned, the, the AI ML uh, use cases ahead of us, incredibly exciting. Uh, the way we're you know, building and co-innovating things around how we make data more accessible in our data marketplace and more advanced data governance and data quality techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, the use of you know, creating data hubs and, and moving our API landscape into this environment as well is going to be incredibly empowering in terms of accessibility of data uh, across our enterprise globally, as well as both for our internal stakeholders and our external stakeholders. Uh, so I'll stop there because <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things in there. We could be here a long time. <laughs> yes, but, we could. But it is an exciting time, and, and I appreciate you both sharing your perspectives on this because you've got a winning formula you know, going and uh, look forward to what's happening. And we'll see you next year right back here on the Executive Summit Absolutely. to measure the success in 2023. How Sounds about that? Thank you got you a John. deal? Awesome. Sounds good. Excellent, good deal. You've been watching AWS uh, here at Coverage of reInvent 22. We are at the Executive Summit, sponsored by Accenture, and you are watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>